Now I'm sure you all know the old saying of the best defense is a good offense. However, for today's magnificent creature from the world of Subnautica, we will be flipping that saying on its head a little bit into something more akin to the best offense is a good defense. As the creature in question has managed to develop a defensive ability that technically speaking, ranks amongst the most dangerous overall attacks in the entire game. That's right, today we will be talking about the heavily requested Gasopod. I'll be telling you everything we know about these creatures, where in the world you can find them, what they look like, what they behave like, what their defense is like, and any other interesting points of trivia or information that I'm able to dig up on them. Now, as with all of the other lore videos, I have to preface this by saying that this might contain spoilers to the main story of Subnautica, even though it shouldn't. So if you don't want to have any of that spoiled, I strongly recommend clicking off the video and coming back to it later. Now with that out of the way, prepare your antidote, get your gas mask ready, and let's go. Now first of all, the gasopod is a very common creature at the start of the game, so chances are it was one of the first animals you've encountered after diving into the water from your sea pod. In general, it is a somewhat large, about medium-sized defensive herbivore that inhabits the crash zone mesas, the safe shallows, and the dunes. Recognizing them comes very easy as they have a very distinct appearance, coming in a somewhat dark green shape with a slightly rounded body, somewhat similar to the cuttlefish, with a smaller head going into a larger torso, going into a powerful rounded tail. The top of the body seems to be comprised of a series of large, scale-like structures that cover it from the head to the fin that ends just before its tail. However, the more lightly colored, almost white belly does not possess these. On the sides, the gasopod has two large fins, which in combination with its tail it uses to propel itself, two additional tiny ear-like fins around its head, which upon closer examination very much resembles a gas mask, with two rounded bright green and yellow eyes, and a prolonged nose slash snout, with five openings at the end, with the central one, which I presume to be the mouth, having a row of sharp teeth surrounding the sides of it. On its back, the gasopod possesses its signature big rounded glowing tail, which seems to be comprised of a bunch of shafts inside of its body leading towards the center of it, with bright yellow spots at the end that get smaller and smaller as you move towards the creature's head, stopping about midway through its body. Finally, looking at the top of its body, you can also see a bunch of grey slash dark green spots, which are mostly focused on the sides and just above its fins, as well as a tiny bit of brown marking right at the center of its largest scale. But appearances aside, it's time to talk about that killer defense. Now first of all, the gasopod is one of the few rare creatures that are only active during either the day or the night, with gasopods particularly being mostly active during the day, where they will mostly swim around in smaller groups, having a seemingly flourishing social life and creating a bunch of noises to seemingly communicate with other individuals from the same species. At night, gasopods will most often stop in the water, though sometimes they can still move just much more slowly, and its defense's attack's radius will be lowered. Now, should something seemingly dangerous approach the gasopod, it will perform several powerful swings of its tail, releasing a bunch of algae pods that will, after a little bit, explode creating a cloud of poisonous gas that will deplete the player's life should they stay inside of it, together with a solid drain in the player's nutrition. Now, according to the PDA entry, the gasopod does this by contracting its abdominal muscles, causing what is essentially an algae gland at the end of its tail to emit said compound. However, interestingly enough, the gasopod might also sometimes do this, simply as a part of either a mating or a relationship-related ritual with another individual from its species. Now, coming back to what I said at the start of the video, the gas cloud that is released by a gasopod can truly be devastating and not just for the player. See, as I described it, it is essentially a two-stage process, where first a gas pod is released, which later explodes into that toxic cloud. However, should the player acquire the gas pod before it explodes, 
they will be able to keep it in their inventory where they're able to use it for crafting purposes like the gas torpedo or to directly harm whatever they choose. Here it should be noted that while grabbing these on a regular basis can be very dangerous, the prawn suit is unaffected by the toxic gas. If you can simply get your hands on one, it will render the entire process completely safe. Now that is essentially all of the information that the game gives us on the gasopod. However, there are a few minor points that I would still like to mention before ending this video off. Now for those smart cookies of you out there, who have noticed that the tail of a gasopod is somewhat similar to a whole bunch of plants that can be found in the bulb zone, well, that might not just be coincidental, as in the original concept for Subnautica, the gasopod was in fact supposed to mostly inhabit this zone. And speaking about the early versions of Subnautica, it should also be very much noted that the gasopod was in fact the first creature to be added into the early build during development. So I suppose in the end, even if the gasopod does not have giant fangs, isn't leviathan sized and cannot hypnotize the player, a lot of credit should be given to this manatee with a gas mask for a head as it essentially paved the road for all of the other awesome things that we got in the Marvel's game that is Subnautica. But with that, I'm going to end this video off and I hope you guys enjoyed and learned at least something new about this wonderful underwater world. If you did, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting or subscribing, all of those would be very much appreciated. And if there's a theory or any facts that I forgot to mention or that you would like to bring up, make sure to leave those down in the comments as well, I would very much like to read them. Now with that, I will wish you a beautiful rest of the day and because everyone keeps saying I sound like chills. I'm gonna tell you more about some Burger King foot lettuce in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.